Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for High Velocity Radio. Lee Cantor here, another episode of High Velocity Radio, and this is going to be a fun one. Today on the show, we have Olga Zapasek with Novidia Creative. Welcome, Olga. Hello, Lee. It's so great to be on this uh, show. Thank you for having me, and welcome to all the listeners. (laughs) Well, before we get too far into things, tell us about your practice. How are you serving folks? Well, what I do um, is I run a digital marketing agency and consultancy, um, and we help really purpose-driven um, small to medium-sized businesses and coaches as well. Um, primarily, we, what we do is we help them unlock uh, their growth potential, really increase their impact. Um, and really help them with their digital footprint in this space. So the way we do that is a lot for storytelling, um, so content marketing, and also thought leadership, really putting the personal in your brand because you want to be human about things. You want to engage with people and connect with them on that emotional level. So what's your backstory? How'd you get into this line of work? Well, my uh, backstory is kind of has twists and turns to it. Um, I started out um, as a journalist back in the day, and that brought me to, you know, I've always been passionate about storytelling and ways we can tell stories and interact with people and have conversations. And I started out as a journalist, which led me to being an editor. I had my own magazine for quite a while, seven years, but Due to some um, health issues at the time and also just discovering that the way journalism was going, it wasn't really what I wanted to do, you know, with my life, but also the way I wanted to help people, because that was the missing link in everything that I was doing. Yes, I was helping people by telling their stories, but I felt there was more I could do. So I was engaging more and more in marketing myself as freelancing. And um, I took that route with my master's degree. And then what happened next is I started uh, really doing a lot of consulting work for companies, but I was doing it more so for corporations. (laughs) And that wasn't as fulfilling because um, they were already at a stage where their growth was quite, I would say, ample. (laughs) And I felt um, that I wanted to help the person who was just starting out like I had back in the day, because I knew all the hardships that come with it, and that there are no there aren't really as many people you can turn to. So I decided that that's that. (laughs) And I love the corporate life, I (laughs) decided that I'm not doing that anymore and not helping those bigger businesses and brands. And decided to go out on my own. (laughs) And that's when Novidia Creative started up. Um, And it's been a fascinating journey ever since. And it brings me so much joy just to see people um, have the results that they wish for, but even more so the life that they desire. Because that's why I do this, um, to give people the life that they dream of, really, because it's more than about the business for them. They want freedom. They want, you know, um, to buy the things that they never had before. They want to spend time with their children. So I want to give them that by allow, by giving them the systems and strategies, really, that will make their business function in a capacity where they can have all those things. Now, do you have any actionable advice for that business uh, owner that it may be struggling and that um, that maybe you can share that will take them to a new level? Yes, um, I would love to do that. Um, so first of all, um, one of the key things uh, that I can't stress enough is really building um, relationships. Because building quality relationships really for engagement and stories to propel things forward for you. So I would say take your time with that. Don't rush into things. Don't rush into the sale because sometimes we're so you know, anxious to get that new client, anxious to get that sale once we have a lead that you know, we, we sometimes come out with it with that hard sale. Don't do that. 
um, you know, you wouldn't ask someone to marry you on that first date, as I say. Um, so don't do that with a lead. Be authentically you and engage in conversations. See what their pain points are. See how you can help them on that call or in that private message or even in a, if it's in a Facebook group or LinkedIn group, wherever it may be where you're meeting them, you know, meet them where they're at, give them some tips and nurture that relationship. Keep it going. Ask questions, ask follow-up questions, see them if you can get them on another call and then see if you can help them. Come from it in a way where you're offering them help and value where you're not really selling because people really connect with that. If they see that you're just trying to support them. Yeah. There's no shortcut for caring. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. And you, you know, you can't rush these things. And those are the types of um, those leads that turn into clients who you've taken the time with that to develop that relationship. Those are like lifetime clients for you. They will pay you back, um, not only in testimonials, but you'll see that a lot of them will send clients your way because of the way you took time to develop that relationship. And some of them might be repeat customers. <laughs> Now, in your work, do you work with uh, primarily um, B2B companies, B2C companies, um, solopreneurs? Like, so, Do you have a niche that you specialize in? Yes. So I work primarily with service-based um, uh, businesses, primarily in health and wellness and spirituality, lifestyle and home. So that could be interior designers, real estate agents. And we also um, sometimes help, you know, business and career. Um, so those are our niches. Um, but, you know, we don't turn away anyone who has a big purpose behind it. And I mean, a real purpose, not, you know, I want to make more money. There has to be something that's really driving them that they want to do more in this world or for another individual. So we look for that. And if it really moves us, you know, we'll, we'll definitely work with you. Now, what do you tell that entrepreneur that is kind of overwhelmed by marketing? Like they may not be great at marketing, but they're great at what they do. But, you know, every day you're just bombarded with people saying, hey, try this or, hey, you have to be here. Or, hey, where's your TikTok? Hey, where's your Instagram? Hey, do this. And they, they don't know. Number one, they don't know which is the appropriate place to be. And number two, they don't know how to behave in, in that space, even if they entered all of them. And they tend to dabble on all of them and not go deep in any of them. It's funny that you mentioned that, Lee, because I was just um, before our chat on a call with a prospect, actually, who was um, stressing about this very thing. And I hear this all the time, um, literally. You know, they tell me, Olga, I have to be on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, you name it, right? I have to build an email list, um, create an ebook, be, have a podcast. And I ask them why. That's the first thing I do. I ask them, why do we need to do all of that right now? And what they usually tell me is because I saw, you know, so-and-so is doing it and it's working for her or him. Or I saw this in the Facebook group I'm in. And if it's working for that influencer that they follow or for their business friend, then it must be the answer to all their problems. That's what we're thinking. But as we know, that's not necessarily true. So... This is, like you said, very common with small business owners who are just starting out or only in year one or two in their business. And they're not really seeing, I would say, you know, the traction that they desire. And in an effort to prepare, propel their growth, um, they start to try everything and anything that um, comes their way and they get distracted by something that feels really fresh and new because that might be better, right? If that's not working, then this must. And so they keep trying this and that, adding really multiple things to their plate without ever giving anything a true chance or more importantly, really taking a moment, I would say, to figure out what will work best for them, their business and their audience. Because I can't stress that enough. You always have to be thinking about your audience. So if they don't take the time to assess the strategies and tactics, you know, in terms of long-term goals, 
feasibility and sustainability, it will bring delays and wasted resources. So you step away from progress really as you keep concentrating on something new. And, you know, instead of giving what you are doing a fair chance. So it's comparable to what I like to call throwing spaghetti on the wall. You're copying actions of others and watching what will stick. And that's not really a custom strategy for you that will bring you success. You're simply trying out tactics that are short term and that haven't been adjusted toward your brand, your goals or your audience. So first of all, you know, marketing takes time. It's not a race. (laughs) You're not running a marathon here. So by trying the next best thing alongside anything and, and really everything that you're already doing, you're on the fastest way to burnout. So if you're doing that right now, stop. (laughs) And what I would suggest doing is, first of all, stop consuming so much content because, you know, we do that all the time. We're all guilty of it. We have our cell phones on us all the time. We have our laptops and we're constantly consuming because that will only lead you further down the rabbit hole. So if you want to learn from others, you know, try working with someone one on one, see if someone in a Facebook group can support you. Maybe you can collaborate together and offer each other, um, you know, sessions uh, based on value. Or maybe there's a group coaching program or a mastermind you can join, you know, get advice and insight that's unique to your business. I've personally worked with several coaches and mentors throughout my journey, and I plan to do so in the future because I wouldn't be where I am today without their sound advice and really unrelenting support. So I would say always invest in yourself and in your building, in in your business as a building block, you know, to success, because we can learn so much from one another. And it also shows that you believe in yourself and your business when you're doing that, because you're investing in yourself and you're moving out of your comfort zone and leveling up. But to give you something that, you know, you can actually do. So what you can do is when you get distracted by that shiny new toy, first list, I I would say three main goals at the start of each quarter then pick um, two to three focus areas that will revolve around your main goals and your marketing strategy. And here's the very important bit to that. Stay the course. You want to truly become the master of these. So for example, um, if brand awareness is a goal and you choose to be active on social media as part of your strategy, then pick only one platform and become the master of it. And then you can adjust things next quarter if you feel it's necessary for your growth. Though I would advise you to wait at least six months to properly analyze your actions and see results. Um, And also, like I said, get an accountability partner, someone who will help you see that you don't necessarily need those other things to move the needle forward. This can be a friend, um, you know, uh, someone in a Facebook group who shares your passions, someone who will really push you to keep doing what you're doing, all while facing your doubts and fears. Because I think that's actually the culprit of the shiny object syndrome that, you know, we, we go down that fear tunnel. Now, for the listener that might be thinking about um, getting a coach, maybe for the first time, mm-hmm. can you uh, share what it's like to work with you? Like, what does that first conversation look like? And what are some of the things that they should do to be prepared to make the most out of that first conversation with you? So uh, the first conversation with me really is always about getting to know each other and where that person is at. Um, I laugh because I call myself a coach consultant um, because um, I do a hybrid of coaching and consulting where, you know, I guide someone, but I also do it with them so they don't feel alone in it because, you know, a lot of coaches, they leave it up to the person to do all the work. But if I'm seeing that they need that helping hand, I'm there to hold it and actually take it and give them the proper um, methods to actually do this. So I lead by example, but I also do it with them. 
Um, but going back to that, uh, when it comes to the actual conversation, you know, I call my uh, discovery calls really um, breakthrough or power hour calls, because what we do is we really start strategizing on these calls and, you know, getting into the nitty gritty of things in your business and seeing how we can move the needle forward, because that's all I really want to do. Whether somebody decides to work with me or not, I want to help them move that needle forward in their business. So, I start each conversation, you know, getting to know them, asking lots of questions. I always joke about my journalism skills come out then. Um, and then we dive deep and strategize together. Now, before we wrap, uh, I know a lot of uh, folks out there, especially that are contemplating making a change to becoming an entrepreneur, they never think they have enough information and they I don't want to call them imposters, but they might think of themselves as not worthy enough to be giving advice to anybody. Do you have any advice uh, for those folks out there that can maybe help shift that mindset or reframe uh, what yeah. they're doing so they feel confident, you know, asking other people for money? Because that's what sales is in a, yeah. for a small business person. Exactly, exactly, Lee. And, you know, um, I've been known to suffer from imposter syndrome back in the day as well. So anyone who's suffering from it, um, know that it's common and it happens even to the biggest gurus out there. You might be surprised. Um, we all have our doubts from time to time. So I always say that mindset is, you know, truly half of the recipe. Um, so if your mindset isn't in the right place, your actions will get stuck. Um, you won't move forward because mindset truly is everything. I know it's a cliche that you hear from time to time, but it, it really is everything. So when those negative thoughts start to creep in of how this will never work or it's taking too long or I'm just not cut out for this, there are far better people out there. Why would anyone want to work with me? I want you to do this. First and foremost, be kind to yourself. We all suffer from imposter syndrome, like I said, and impatience from time to time, right? We want things fast, <laughs> but you have to remember that this isn't a marathon, like I said, that you're running in. This is a lifelong journey. So enjoy the ride, the bumps and the wins. You know, we're all here to teach you something about you, your business, your clients all along the way, and you'll be far richer for it. So you have to believe in yourself first and what you can achieve, because if you don't, why should your client? So to help with this, I said that I really suggest that you make it a daily habit to repeat positive affirmations. And I would say hang them up as a reminder all around your workplace um, and house. So be it the kitchen, right? We frequent the kitchen, um, the bathroom, your laptop. This is actually how I start my own mornings. Um, the minute I wake up, I look at all the notes I have from the house because I work from home. And I also repeat affirmations to myself for 10 minutes. And that gives me energy and confidence to push past any hardships within you know, my month or day. They really set the tone to my day, I would say. So while I could give you, you know, a list of statements to repeat to yourself right now, like um, something that comes really to mind right now is every client that my business serves will be impacted in a powerful way, or I do not worry about things I cannot control, or I think it is much better when we come up um, really, I think it's better when we come up with our own. Uh, statements because I could ramble off a lot of you know affirmations that I repeat to myself but I think they hold more merit and power when we come up with ones that mean something to us so it makes it easier for you to believe in them so what I would suggest is even today take five minutes to write a couple of those down and then, you know, repeat them to yourself for seven to 10 days. And you'll be surprised by how much we're making an impact already on you and your business and how you approach every lead, every client with those affirmations in mind. So 
definitely try that out because it's life changing. Well, Olga, if somebody wants to learn more, uh, maybe get on your calendar, have a more substantive conversation with you or somebody on your team, what's the website? Yeah, sure. So um, you can visit me at novidiacreative.com or you can also, you know, um, message me on my LinkedIn at Olga Zapisek. And, and I would just like to say something I was also recently reminded of myself this week, but I think is really important. Make sure you're having fun in your business, because if you're not, think about what you could do to have more fun in it. Because after all, you know, you didn't set out on this journey to feel miserable, right? There are going to be hiccups and challenges along the way, um, but there's also going to be great moments. So set little challenges for yourself to enjoy things. Create maybe a weekly or monthly ritual where you celebrate all your wins. Heck, even for a party <laughs> um, for the small ones. And make work a part of your life. Integrate it. Enjoy it. Just have fun. So the website, one more time, if someone wants to connect with you. NovidiaCreative.com. Um, or LinkedIn uh, at Olga Zapisek. That's where you can find me. And that's N-O-V-E-D-I-A-C-R-E-A-T-I-V-E.com. Olga, okay. thank you so much for sharing your story today. You're doing such important work and we appreciate you. Thank you for having me on, Lee. It's been a pleasure and I hope everyone um, achieves the success we're going for. All right, this is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on High Velocity Radio. 